Now, uh, let's talk about another mystery, and it is the mystery, of course, of the Russell Brand case, because a very polarising case uh, has been uh, kind of created, if you like, uh, an investigation by dispatches in the Sunday Times uh, accusing Russell Brand of all sorts of sexual um, assault, uh, rape in some cases, um, sexual uh, deviancy, all sorts of uh, bad behaviour, uh, which he absolutely refutes and says he hasn't done. Um, but he hasn't denied it in a way which has put anybody's mind at, r at rest. And now there's a police investigation going on as well. Other people have come forward. The latest on it is that people say uh, that he should be demonetised from all parts of his business. So far, uh, he's still able to make money out of Rumble. Um, some people think he should be deplatformed altogether. I'm not one of those, actually. Uh, but let's talk to Nick Freeman, uh, otherwise known as Mr Loophole, because he's got some thoughts on this particular situation. Nick, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Thanks very much for talking to us. It's an interesting one, this, isn't it? Because, again, like most issues seemingly in the public domain these days, it, it's become very polarised. Russell Brand's fans think that uh, uh, there's not, you could never do anything wrong in their eyes. They don't really care what he's being accused of. They think he's being silenced in some way, shape or form. He says that, says there's a conspiracy against him. Others say, you know, if this man has behaved in this way, uh, he must be taken off the, out of the public arena. Um, but you've got a better idea, I think. Well, it's, it's another his, a, a case of historical allegations. We've obviously got to be very careful what we say, <laughs> despite the fact that there's been pages and pages and pages um, spoken about the case. Yes. But th these, these are old cases, and th the issue in essence, as it often is, is an, an issue of consent. Mm. Um, and so I, I've, I have a couple of ideas, and I've been trying to persuade the government for some time now to, to consider two things. So, first of all, th these sexual allegations, the, the, the complainants, the alleged victims, um, have anonymity. They have lifelong an an anonymity, and it, it's there's such a unique stigma associated with the allegations, as evidenced in the case of Russell Brand, as evidenced by the way he's being cut wherever we go. Um, that, that there's that there's almost a sort of an inference of guilt which flies in the face of the presumption of innocence. So my view is there should be a level playing field as a general rule, and as a general rule. Um, people who are accused of sexual allegations should be entitled to anonymity, lifelong anonym anonymity, um, until such time as they are convicted, or in rare circumstances, if they feel, for example, the prosecution feel that there's a, a serial offender, such as Jimmy Savile, they go to a judge and say, look, this is what we believe, will you lift this veil of anonymity? It used to be the situation, um, and, and in my view, particularly because of the way social media works, we need to restore it. Uh, we don't want to have a trial by media now, and then if somebody is charged, and let's, look, not, let's not just say specifically Russell Brown, but let's assume some, after a lengthy investigation, in which, of course, in this particular case, you know, people are only coming forward now. Um, he, if he's ultimately acquitted, why should anyone know about anything that he's done if it's not unlawful? Mm. So my view is, first of all, lifelong anonymity until such time as you're convicted, unless the judge says otherwise. Um, and, and more pertinently, I think there should be a time limit on these allegations um, for a variety of reasons. So my view is, um, as in personal injury cases, there should be a time limit of three years mm. from the date of the allegation. Uh, obviously, that's always subject to waiver. Um, if, for example, the person was a, a child, um, then it would be three years from attaining adulthood. And there would always be a discretion best than the trial judge or a high court judge if, for example, somebody was suffering from mental health difficulties, the judge would hear applications say, I'm prepared to waive it. Um, and the reason I say that is, is several fold. First of all, um, for, for complainants, w w the idea is we want justice. We want people who have done bad, committed crimes to be convicted, and we don't want people who haven't committed crimes to have their lives ruined. So the advantage of three years is people come forward quickly. They're encouraged to come forward quickly. Uh, and obviously, if they do that, if they come forward ideally straight away, the police have the best opportunity of getting evidence, and it may be... It, it may be forensic evidence, it may be DNA, it may be um, evidence of recent complaint, um, it may be evidence of emotional distress. All these sort of things disappear with um, time. Um, so the longer, yeah. the, the greater the delay in making the, the complaint to the police, the less prospect you have of getting a conviction. Right. And I, I am sure, of course, guilty people are being acquitted, and I'm not suggesting any way 
not talking about Russell Brand. I'm just talking generally. Right. The, the other point. The but other the other thing, thing, let me just interrupt you for a sec. The other, I mean, I, I can understand you wanting to have anonymity for somebody who's accused of a sex crime. However, um, that depends on the circumstances in a way, doesn't it? Because if it's yeah, the absolutely. police, if it's the police who are in charge of an investigation uh, and they've had a complaint made to them about somebody, they can keep somebody's um, uh, name out of the press. They can keep that anonymity and they can be ordered to do so. But if that complainant has not gone to the police and instead has gone to say dispatches or gone to the Sunday Times or gone yep. to a, a, you know a newspaper you can't really enforce it can you well it's much harder to enforce because there's an inference they've waived that anonymity by going forward I haven't seen the program the, the dispatches program so I don't know I suspect some people have remained anonymous and some people have been named once they lift that veil then that, that their name remains in the public arena right. um, and that that's where it should be and of course it's difficult the, the other point is this uh, from a complainant's point of view, or victim's point of view, it, they, they'll overcome the situation. They won't be carrying this terrible burden with them for so many years. And if they come forward quickly, if somebody is guilty, not only will they be brought to justice much sooner, but they'll have less chance of committing crimes with everybody, with other people. Um, so they'll be brought to account, they'll know that, uh, and the police will have more chance of convicting. So the guilty are more likely to be convicted, um, the evidence will be assessed carefully, and if the evidence isn't there, the case disappears, and people who are innocent are allowed to get on with their life, with their reputation intact. Nobody should know about it, because, as I say, this, this type of allegation destroys lives. So we have all the, the, the pl social platforms, apart from Rumble at the moment, mm. pulling, um, pulling the, the, the rug from under um, Brad Brand's feet. And yeah. the inference behind that is he's done something wrong. Right. We don't know. We're, we're not sitting in moral judgment. We shouldn't be that sort of society. And no, that I don't think so. But some people believe that we should, and that's the interesting part of this whole story, you know, because I don't know whether you have a qualification to say anything on this front legally, but I wonder whether he's got legal recourse against some of these platforms that have sort of effectively demonetized him and said, you can't make any money through us. Well, I, I, he, he may have a legal recourse. Again, I don't know what, what basis, whether there's a contract involved, but if, if somebody makes a false allegation against you, yeah. which obviously damages your reputation, there's no question here that his reputation has been, it's been produced. Mm. And that, that allegation is false. He has an action for libel for defamation. He has a huge action against people who make false allegations. Obviously, the, the social platforms, that's a different scenario, and I'm not sure what the, whether there's a contract there, what, what the specific arrangements are. So uh, uh, the honest answer is I don't know because I don't know what the small print says, if there is any small print. Yes, exactly right. Um, and that is the problem, isn't it, with this case? Because um, once the genie is out of the bottle and you then get more kind of what are, are, regard, what are, are described anyway by the police as non-recent accusations from other people, which have, done, which have been enough apparently to, to kickstart a, a police investigation, you know, it's all sort of very, very long ago, isn't it? You have a television program, you have an article in the newspaper, and you then have the police literally advertising to people, will you please come forward and tell us what your dealings are with this man? Yeah. I mean, normally what, what should happen in society is we have a police force, we should trust that police force, they should be capable, and they do have specialist people to deal with these sort of allegations, and there are specialist prosecutors. And, and what people should do is if, God forbid, they are the subject, they are the victim of, of this type of heinous crime, they should go forward to the police immediately. The evidence should be preserved, the case investigated, and those brought to account are put before a court as soon as possible and are dealt with. But it's, it doesn't serve anyone's interest to sit on it for years and years and years, then go to the newspapers, uh, then maybe go to the police or maybe not. Mm. Maybe there'll be civil actions against Russell Brand. I don't know. It, we're turning justice on its head, and in my view, it, it's not for the betterment of society. Yep, absolutely right. Nick, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. We've just got some break.